What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Three and Out YouTube page. I'm John Middlecoff, and we are talking football all day, every day. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. Let's roll, baby. Well, we just had some breaking news. The Carolina Panthers have benched former number one overall pick, Bryce Young. Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, will come in, uh, come in off the pine and take over for the Carolina Panthers, who, through two weeks, are easily the worst team in the NFL. They have a point differential of negative 60. Again, we've played two games. I want to look at this situation through a positive lens and a negative lens. Positive, which there isn't much, right? He has not looked good. You can remove the organization and just watch him on individual plays. Looks like he has no clue what he's doing. He's inaccurate, uh, but we'll get into all that. He's in his second year. He's got a four-year guaranteed contract. The team is so bad, he will start more games this year. This isn't one of those like the Pittsburgh Steelers. If they keep winning and Justin Fields just looks solid, Russell Wilson's their backup. That will not change. Russell Wilson might not see the field this year if they win 10-plus games and Justin Fields doesn't get hurt. He will just hold a clipboard. That is not the case here. This is not like he's now on scholarship as the backup. We're talking about Andy Dalton. We're talking about a team, even if they are better on offense, which it's hard to be any worse, this guy's going to play more games. So sometimes young people, you get a little overwhelmed. You lose your confidence. Confidence to me when you're young, uh, you know, they use this in golf a lot, but I, I think this speaks for any fragile person. And that's not like saying Bryce is, but I just think young people's confidence can waver pretty quickly. And when you're confident, you feel like you're never going to lose it. And when you lose it, you feel like it's never going to come back. And I think that is something that most young people share in common. It's why most people are kind of high and low. And, uh, you know, when they go through real life, which let's face it, Alabama playing for Nick Saban is not real life. The NFL is. And this is tough real life because you're playing for the Carolina Panthers, uh, insane owner, and just crazy, you know, coaching changes. But, like, his story's not written. He's not just set in stone as one of the worst players of all time. He currently is that. Like, that, that's where we're at right now. One of the worst players we've ever seen. But he's young. And he's going to get more opportunities. I promise you that. If I had to put the over-under on games that Andy Dalton starts, I'd set the number at like two and a half. <laughs> like, I don't expect them to just start rattling off wins and uh, Andy to be the savior. So his story is not written, though we have one big picture problem is if they have the number one overall pick, like they're not going to trade that thing. This is not a situation where the Bears were in a couple years ago when they ironically traded to the Panthers, Like they will draft a quarterback. His career with the Panthers would end like that. I know he wasn't the number one overall pick and they didn't trade anything for him, but we just saw Kenny Pickett. Was in Steelers for two years. Then he's gone, which I like. Like, there's no point in just holding on to a guy because you paid him some money, which the NFL most of my life did, but now they're making so much money, they're like, yeah, we'll just pay him to go away. This guy's not good enough. So when he does get his shot again, for him to avoid assuming that they feel like a lock, I mean, a lock top three picking team, and to me, they would be the, I haven't looked at the odds, but the heavy favorites to have the number one overall pick. Like, if you're the Panthers, you got to draft a quarterback. Assuming a couple of these guys really kind of elevate and you feel good about taking them number one overall. But I know this. I've seen enough of Shador Sanders. I've seen enough of Carson Beck. I'm sure there are other guys out there that will kind of come to the uh, top of the list. Physically gift, you know, physical attributes and the, their God-given gifts are in a different world than this guy. I mean, this guy's short, can't move, weak arm, not accurate. And that's where, let's face it, you kind of got to go to the glass half empty. That This is a disaster. As of right now, this is one of the worst situations we've ever seen. Ever. Because 
the Niners made one of the worst trades in NFL history. The difference is they kept winning. The first year after they made the trade and Trey Lance didn't play, they went to the NFC Championship game. The next year, when Trey Lance started and then got hurt in week two and was out for the season, by the end of the season, they had Brock Purdy and they were in the NFC Championship game. The following year, they trade him. They're in the Super Bowl. Because ultimately, if you miss on draft picks, even crazy trades, i.e. the Niners, the goal of this whole thing is to win games on Sunday, to be in playoff games, to compete in the biggest moments. If you do that, you can whip on draft picks. No one cares. Their problem is, is they make this crazy trade, first round picks, DJ Moore, they still owe them a second round pick. And they don't just keep losing, they get destroyed. I mean, they're getting worked. It's impossible to stay on the trajectory that they're on in terms of point differential. But they'd be headed for like a minus 600 season. It'd be actually way more than that. Just doing the math in my head. Because hell, 10 games at this rate, I guess, yeah, it'd be about 600. Because 10 games would be about 300 if you're averaging 30 points a game. But it, it, they're just awful. And this Dave Canales guy, good story. You know, beat some demons, had a little porn addiction. I'm not bringing that up. He wrote a book about it, so he wanted it out there. Uh, Good-looking guy. Sometimes I red flag when my coach is a little too good-looking. But he was a guy that could never really rise in the ranks in Seattle. And he's had a crazy two years. He gets to be the quarterback coach, Geno Smith, comeback player of the year. Gets the buck job. Baker Mayfield turns into, you know, a really good player. Well, it kind of looks like maybe Geno Smith just kind of is what he is now. And he's kind of been no different than when Canales was there or when he's been gone. Baker Mayfield, with or without him, looks pretty good to me. And you take on this job with this owner with a bunch of money. It's a lot going on, you know, a lot going on. You inherit this quarterback who's 5'9", who I I saw a highlight yesterday to throw a ball into the flat. He had to jump because he can't see. Well, most of us that are 5'9", 5'10", 5'11", if you stand behind a bunch of guys who are 6'5", 6'6", it is difficult to see. You don't need to be Flacco, 6'6", but it does help being 6'2", 6'3". This guy is not only, like Kyler Murray is small, but the things he can do relative to Bryce aren't even in the same universe. Elite speed, elite arm, great deep ball thrower. Not a confident player. (laughs) When he gets it rolling, watch out. You watch Bryce and you go, I don't see the talent. And and listen, I was someone that liked him coming out of college, but I remember visually right away last year when you see him in the NFL, you're like, I've been going to these games for a long time. I've stood on the sideline in warmups in the NFL, I don't know, 50 plus times in my life, maybe more. The size of these, and I've been going to training camp practices, the size of these human beings. They're fucking enormous. These are not your average Joe that you see at Safeway at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. These men are huge. The offensive linemen and defensive linemen, it is difficult to operate when you're that tiny. The other thing that we've seen over the course of the last, I don't know, half decade, maybe even longer, is the speed in which these defensive linemen can move. They've never been faster. They've never been more explosive. I'm talking on the whole. Obviously, we've always had elite defensive linemen. But I think the depth of it, and we've never had a deeper roster of interior pass rushers. So, well, they have a quicker route to you than the guy on the edge. And when the D-tackle can run faster than the quarterback who can't see anything, like, you you got problems. Obviously, his confidence is lost. It's just an utter disaster for the Carolina Panthers. There's no way around it. But the reality is when you find yourself in this situation, I saw it last year with the 49ers and Trey Lance, like the water's already under the bridge. You've already made the deal. The deal sucks. But it's like when you have a stock that's down 50%, like you can't just will it back to 100%. It may never come back. It may go down another 50%. So you either got to embrace, am I going to sell? Am I going to move on? Or am I going to let this thing ride? And sometimes when you let it ride, you are rewarded. I would say most of the time, you can find yourself in very, very murky waters. So I I think if you were taking educated guesses, you would simply say Bryce Young's career with the Carolina Panthers, this feels like the last year. This feels like the last year. And I, I I was in the car today when I got the news. 
And right away, or I, I was at the gym and I was walking to the car and I saw that he got benched. So I went on Sirius XM and I turned it to NFL radio, channel 88. And it was Rich Gannon on with someone else. And Rich is like rattling off stats. The Carolina Panthers have had the lead for 10 seconds total in the last 10 games. 10 seconds total in 10 games. I was like, eh, that's got to be one of the craziest stats in NFL history. How's that even possible? You haven't just been up early in the first quarter, like 7 nothing for like a five-minute stretch? And the answer is no. They have not. Their only two games that they won last year were on last-second field goals. Like, th- this operation, this situation, and it shows you, like, David Tepper is one of the great investors in the history of the financial markets. In his time as an owner, like, the thing that's hard about the NFL, like, buying a team, is your strengths, like, your ability, whatever you did to make all that money, is kind of irrelevant. It really doesn't matter that much. Because you can't call plays. You can't coach anybody. You can't do anything to the football team. And that's the only way that we view an NFL team as successful. Are you winning or are you losing? And the owner has little to no power on that. I I think owners sometimes get too much credit because there's a randomness in hiring. There really is. Now, once you hire the right guy, then it is on you financially back him and let him cook. And if you don't hire the right guy, like John Mara took a bunch of shit for saying, like, I'm not comfortable letting Saquon go. Everyone's like, he's talking like a fan. Well, no shit, he doesn't want to lose his best player. And he's basically telling him, like, listen, I'm uncomfortable doing this, but I hired you to do a job, you do it. But you better believe this come back to haunt you. And that, that's where I wonder if Tepper, like, he never gets confident with anyone he hires because you're constantly losing. And it's really hard for him not to be hands-on. I think a lot of people are asking the question, like, did Tepper do this? Because I saw right before I hopped on, Jeremy Fowler tweeted out that, like, every guy found out in position meetings. So it's it's not like Dave Canales went in front of the team this morning in a team meeting to go, we're making a quarterback change. Told the guys in the quarterback room. And then, you know, NFL buildings are small. Word travels fast. (laughs) Obviously, it breaks on the internet, and all hell breaks loose. So I think you have to ask yourself, like, is this a temper decision? And this is where, like, would temper even be wrong? The problem is, like, is that the right thing to do? I mean, all this stuff's complicated. If I'm him, like, I don't fucking want to watch this guy anymore. He's unwatchable as just a consumer. And ultimately, at my core, who I am to the, to just like, at the most basic level, is a football consumer. And you would have, I get paid to do this. And I can't watch this guy. Like, I I find Deshaun Watson, Watson unwatchable. I find Bryce Young unwatchable. I love football. I, I consume it all hours from start to finish, Saturday through Sunday night. And he he's he, he's the anti-consumer friendly player. Like Kyler Murray is a very pro-consumer player because it's like, God, this is a fun player to watch. Bryce is the opposite. Does nothing remotely interesting. Just, it doesn't get any worse. And now the Panthers are saying... Head to the pine meat. 